L'intervento di Monsieur Cavalier dell'Association Française du, du Roi. Sì, sono qui. No. <ride> Buongiorno a tutti. Uh, parlerò in, in inglese anche. Um, I, I just have, for, first of all, to apologize uh, for Patrick Antoine, who was supposed to, to uh, talk uh, five minutes this morning on this issue, but he was unable to, to come here, so I'm just replacing him on this issue, and I want to deliver you the, his, his message on uh, the French Refrigeration Association position concerning the evolutions of uh, regulation on uh, F-gases mainly. Um, We really think that it is necessary to uh, review uh, the F gas regulation in Europe, and uh, this is, uh, we think, the, the first major step for us, and we appreciate it, the, the uh, overall uh, objectives given by the proposition of the Commission. Um, we worked a lot on uh, uh, giving inputs on, on that and to react on the, fr on the first draft, even if, if it was a, a non-draft. Non Um, and we think that we have to focus, uh, in, in order to have a, a really uh, good European regulation uh, to reach um, environmental goals we have. Uh, but we, our main point is that we need to be fair, first of all, and to take into account all the elements. Of course, the direct uh, GWP, but also the energy consumption and the, ric the risk assessment of the different solutions, and finally, the economic uh, situation of each sector. Um, as you know, we have already implemented in France some uh, elements that are in the project of the Commission. Since 1992, um, we are applying uh, regulation to all kinds of equipments over two kilograms of, uh, of F-gas, for example. We have enlarged it to uh, transport, refrigerated transport, to uh, car air conditioning. So we, we appreciate all these elements in this sense. But we have also done mistakes, such uh, uh, you, you have heard about uh, French regulation on um, uh, ammonia refrigeration. We nearly banned during years ammonia in France, even if it is environmentally uh, friendly fluid because of safety issues. And we just want to be careful on the way the risk is, uh, is taken into account because please don't do what we have done on ammonia during years at uh, European scale from some uh, um, uh, solutions. So, uh, in the same time, we have just one uh, small problem. The, the French government has uh, a plan to, to build a, a tax on uh, HFCs an environmental tax on HFCs, and this is our main fight right now, because as a European Commission, um, among the different tools available, as chosen regulation and uh, ban of, uh, of, of fluids or reduction of fluids, and this is a, a, a coherent uh, project, uh, European Commission has said we don't put a tax in the same time, but French government has um, an objective to Uh, built a 3 billion euros tax on environment per year and uh, among this tax they have found that it would be very interesting to tax uh, HFCs and on the different scenarios this tax could bring between 350 million uh, up to 700 million euros per year to the French government so it's it's quite interesting because it's a, a, a big part of, uh, of the 3 billion but We think that is totally, uh, is totally um, uh, inefficient because it is uh, uh, just uh, incoherent with uh, F-gas revision at European level. It is a national initiative while we have a European regulation that is uh, on progress. So it's a, a second uh, weak point. And of course, because on an economic point of view, this money that will be withdrawn from the uh, industry of refrigeration will not be invested in the evolution towards uh, environmentally friendly solution. So we really think that it is not a good solution and a good idea of our government to make, uh, to build a tax on FKCs. And um, our fight right now is uh, for a French Refrigeration Association is to say no to a tax. Uh, that uh, would be environmentally not friendly and not efficient. So 
um, if you want to support the French position, uh, you can help us to convince our government that the idea of a tax on HFCs is not the right time, not the right place, and not the right solution. So this is, uh, at, at the moment, our position of FGAS evolution. Yes to a European evolution of FGAS in the frame we have uh, um, seen with uh, an integration of the three main drivers, um, energy efficiency, direct impact, um, and uh, risk assessment, but also economic uh, drivers, and not to a supplementary tax, uh, of course, at a national level. Thank you very much for your attention. Cavalier, director of SEMA Fruin, which is an organism that is occupied with certification and with various diverse laboratories. Parlerà degli F-Gas ehm, nei trasporti refrigerati, situazione e eh, prospettive. Buongiorno. Eh, sì, le, abbiamo parlato molto de, dei gas, sì, vorrei parlare dell'evoluzione eh, del, nel trasporto, dell'impact del... Uh, the live gas. Uh, I will speak in English, it will be better, and the transparents are in English also. Uh, Semafro is a French competent authority for transport refrigeration in France. Uh, we are doing the tests in the laboratories and the certification of equipment also. Um, we have uh, a lot of data concerning these equipment, and uh, it's why we have made this study on what is the situation regarding refrigeration in transport with uh, F-gases and what are the perspectives for the future in terms of uh, replacement. So I will uh, present the, the situation of the fleet in the world in Europe and uh, context and the uh, situation of refrigeration in transport regarding F-gases use and then the, the challenges we have to, to face. Just the fleets, um, according to the uh, AirTalk report of 2010, roughly 4 million equipments are in service uh, for transport refrigeration in, uh, in the world for terrestrial transport, and some uh, 5 uh, up to 8,000 refer containers. That is an average of uh, terrestrial equipment for uh, one equipment for 1,700 inhabitants, but this is very different from one country to another in the world. In Europe, we can evaluate uh, in the 27 countries of uh, European Union to 1.1 million equipments, and that is to say one for 450 people. Um, it's uh, a little bit less in China and uh, even uh, lesser for India, according to NCCD data from 2012, with one equipment for 200,000 people. The market in the developed countries is a mature market where we are uh, renewing the fleet and roughly the average duration of one equipment is, uh, is so, some 10 years, uh, 9 to 10 years and uh, 10 to 12 percent of the fleet is renewed each year um, in Europe in transport. Uh, the main changes uh, of the fleet and equipment are due to the evolution of the use of the equipment. The main challenges have, uh, faced by transport is urban delivery. Our cities have, have changed, the habits of people uh, of consumption are, have changed also, and urban delivery is really the great challenge of transport and refrigerated transport, of course, is one of the major ones. Massification in the transport from production to the distribution centers is also a big challenge. Just uh, um, uh, data in, uh, in, in France in uh, semi-trailers, the average load of uh, uh, fresh products is 10 ton per semi-trailer when the available load is 25. So we have less than 40% of use of this, uh, this uh, load. And also new products and new sensibility. Um, else products, for example, are more and more temperature sensitive. Just in, um, in 2011, 50% of the new pharmaceutical products introduced in the market in France have to be kept between 2 and 8 degrees. Uh, in the developing countries, it's an equipment market, new equipments, and it's an exploding market. Uh, China 
uh, went from uh, some uh, uh, 30,000 equipments in 2007 to 80,000 equipments in uh, 2009. So just uh, the growth rate of the fleet in some countries. Um, the, the context in, um, in the world is that there is a regulation mainly dedicated for performance of insulation and refrigeration capacity in Europe, uh, large Europe, because now ATP area, the uh, agreement on uh, perishable transport, um, is gathering 49 countries. The last country we join is Turkey. And um, FGAS is not in application in all countries. In France, for example, FGAS is mandatory also for transport. But it should apply, as we have seen in the, in the revision. Um, also, other regulations are impacting trans refrigeration uh, in transport is eco-design, uh, transport regulation, and carbon footprint. In the, uh, in the global uh, footprint of frozen products, for example, you have the graph on the, on the right of the slide. You see that transport, refrigerated transport, is 6% of the total uh, carbon footprint of frozen products we are consuming in Europe. Um, in France, we have, uh, I think by chance, um, a mandatory regulation for all equipment. That is to say, a high level of, uh, of quality of this equipment, except for some uses such as uh, um, short transport and vegetables. And the total fleet is uh, 150,000 equipment. But due to this mandatory regulation, we have a centralized system with all the data concerning the transport equipment, and including uh, the information concerning uh, FGAS are included in this database. And using this database, which includes 300,000 equipments, half of them are still in service, half of them have been withdrawn, we access to detailed information concerning FGASs in transport. And we have made the analysis of these uses of uh, FGAS in, in transport in detail. Uh, first of all, an overview of the, of the French fleet. 52% of the fleet is concerned by vans, uh, less than 3.5 tons. 26% uh, roughly a quarter is uh, semi-traders and traders, and the, the, the 22 uh, least percent is, uh, is for trucks. Less than 1% are concerned by train uh, equipments and uh, mobile uh, boxes. In this fleet, um, 96% of the fleet is equipped with uh, uh, air-blown evaporators systems. Uh, all the refrigeration technology, nearly all equipments have, um, are using uh, vapor compression systems. And in this compression system, 4% are for eutectic system, but including a refrigeration unit, and 96 other percent are for air-blown evaporators. Um, Concerning the source of energy, 55% uh, of this equipment are motor-driven equipment. That is to say the, the engine of the vehicle is driving the compressor directly or indirectly. And 45% are, are autonomous. That is to say they have a specific engine, generally a diesel engine, which is driving the uh, compressor of the, of, the, of the refrigeration machine. Um, a, a new kind of equipment appeared in the, in the 90s is a multi-tamp equipment. That is to say, in the same truck with the same unit, you manage to have, at the same time, two or three different temperatures. Uh, now we have some 25% of the equipments in service uh, are multi-compartment equipment. Most, most of them are only two compartments, but uh, you see that it's quite a, a common thing. It's, uh, a way to improve the environmental efficiency because you can, uh, in the same truck, deliver two different uh, products, such as uh, frozen products and uh, fresh products, in the same uh, shop. Concerning the refrigeration machines, you see the, the, the spread of uh, refrigeration capacities, and you see that 17% um, uh, are between 5 and 10 kilowatts, and 30% are over 10 kilowatts containing the biggest ones. And generally, you have uh, an average here, uh, size of the refrigeration um, machines, but also technology is available. Most of them are vapor compression systems. You see that on the left, you have a cryogenic, solid cryogenic system for small containers, for example, very 
small volumes, less, generally less than one cubic meter, and at the other side uh, appeared in the 70s, but again in the, in the last few years, uh, dry, direct cryogenic systems using liquid, but this is remaining a niche and uh, equipped only some tens of equipment in, in France. Um, in this table, you have the different technologies. Uh, we won't go in detail through the technology, but uh, you, you see first that um, mainly when you withdraw the cryogenic system, solid or liquid ones, um, the, you, you have nearly two, at least four fluids used, but uh, two main fluids, that is uh, 134A and uh, 404A, that are mainly used. And in fact, when we analyze the uh, F gas used in transport, 95% in, in mass of the fluids installed in the French refrigeration uh, system in transport are 404A. So the whole fleet is impacted by the project of F gas directly if transport is included. 4% is uh, 134A and less than 1%, less than half percent is uh, 4 a. But this is not exactly the same in other countries. Nevertheless, roughly we have here the spread of uh, the fluids in uh, the world fleet. Um, you have also the mass of fluids that was installed in the production of one year. To say uh, in, in 2011 it was 47 tons of uh, um, fluids and uh, 45 tons of uh, 404A. Some I just mentioned, um, in the eutectic system, uh, they are using also a second fluid in the, in the plates or tubes, and uh, it's a eutectic solution with a, a freezing point at uh, minus 35 or minus 26, and this is a quite important volume, but it is uh, uh, something different. The average load of uh, this unit is 3.86 kilogram per unit. Um, it is quite variable from small units that you have seen is 50% of the market roughly, where you have one 1.5, 1.6 kilograms, and uh, the autonomous system for trucks and trailers, where you find roughly 6.5 kilograms per unit. Um, the, the average uh, load for 1.1 million equipment in Europe is uh, 4,200 uh, tons of uh, HFCs in the transport refrigeration systems, and uh, if we transfer it, it's uh, 16 million tons for CO2 equivalent. So when we have in this situation, what are the solutions for the future, alternatives? This is the evolution. Roughly, the vapor compression system for transport refrigeration units has not really changed for 50 or 60 years now. We have still the same uh, conception of the machines. There was no real um, innovation we have win in terms of fiability, of uh, uh, time life. Uh, the, the first revision now for the last machine you have in the middle is 3,000 hours before a revision, before it was uh, uh, far shorter. We, we have reduced the, the risk of breakdown of the units on the road and so on. But roughly the techniques are the same. Uh, the fleet in the 70s here is already a cryogenic system, direct liquid cryogenic system, uh, equipping the, the fleet of uh, yogurt distribution. And it's exactly the same as you have under the 2010 system of uh, cryogenic liquids. So no real um, evolution in the, in the mass market, but tests are, are ongoing on uh, CO2 equipments, some and this is already on a field test uh, for marine transport is already on sale and for road transport is already on field test. Uh, some absorption, but only for small volume, the, the blue one on the, on the right, and um, all the tests are really on the research uh, level. The only available technologies are still vapor compression system uh, using CO2, which is the most um, uh, convenient for, for the, the, the next future, the short term. Um, in conclusion, refrigerated transport will be directly impacted and strongly impacted by the project of FGAS uh, because of the majority of 404A in the equipment. Uh, there is already on the market a partial solution, a cryogenic system, for example, but this will remain a niche. It has its place 
it's a good solution, but not for all kind of application. Uh, it will remain a very uh, limited solution. And at medium term, what is announced is uh, 2025 for all kind of equipment uh, is still vapor compression system with CO2 as uh, fluid. And you have example here, the, the machines that is already sold for marine containers. The challenge is to build an agenda uh, in the reduction of, uh, in the change of, and the withdrawal of uh, 404A that will be compatible with the, uh, the arrival of this solution and also the maintenance of the existing solution because you have things that transport equipments are used during, let's say, roughly 10 years. And uh, another challenge that is quite important in transport also is to prevent the use of counterfeit refrigerants. Already uh, people died uh, repairing marine containers because of uh, the use of uh, counterfeit refrigerants. We have edited a, a, an informatory note of IIR on this issue and now are appearing uh, counterfeit refrigerant with hydrocarbons to replace uh, 134A or R404. And it's uh, also a safety challenge to, to manage the, the, the counterfeit refrigerants. Thank you for your attention. Uh, grazie Gerard. Ci sono domande su questa presentazione? On the maintenance ban that you mentioned, if we take the commission proposal, it was five ton CO2 equivalent, so probably some of those transport systems would fall under there. And I can tell you that what is being discussed in Council and Parliament lifts this up to 50 tons, and there's general agreement that that's probably the scope for the maintenance ban, and that excludes most of the transport systems. So I, I would think that addresses most of your concerns for the maintenance ban. Okay, th thank you. Uh, Altre domande? Hi, I have a question yep. <laughs> for, for Mr. Cavalier and probably Mr. Coulomb as well. Um, is the adoption of HFO considered an option or not? Some tests have been done um, by the main manufacturers in the world concerning HFOs in the, in the transport refrigeration. Um, up to now, it's in the list of, uh, of solutions that are uh, on test, but it is still on the lab. I have only mentioned the solutions that are ready uh, today, and that is to say, we may imagine that uh, within 2020 or 2025, it is possible to generalize this solution to all kinds of equipment. Of course, the retrofit of uh, uh, of 404A by other um, fluids has been also imagined. Uh, but it's, um, it's not simple, it's not only retrofit, so it's, it's a change of equipment. The challenge in transport is, um, is that either manufacturers uh, directly turn to um, new equipment, it's a choice of uh, carrier, for example, would say it publicly, we, we move to CO2, and we don't want an intermediary solution. And uh, the other alternative is uh, to uh, change to another fluid, but it will be only uh, a first step because retrofit of uh, transport refrigeration units need um, a change of uh, a lot of equipment. The, the major issue of uh, this equipment is that uh, you are working in a limited place, and this is not the same issue for other equipments. But in Europe, the, the dimension of, equip, of transport equipment is uh, regulated. And um, uh, one centimeter is one centimeter. <laughs> and it's not uh, easy to change uh, shortly the conception. But what we can say is that we have at medium term reliable solution to uh, remove 404A if we want to do it in transport. Just what is... Uh, uh, wise to do is to choose the right agenda in order to make it on the, the, the best uh, way 
in terms of economy, of environment impact, and uh, in terms of durability. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.